Hey guys, it's Ed here. So I did a thing, went down one of those internet rabbit holes. Uh, this time I was researching HIT, ended up in a whole bunch of scholarly journals. And uh, yeah, it looks like from now on my cardio workouts are only gonna consist of 40 seconds of work. So yeah, let's talk about that. So to explain further, I'm gonna talk about the different types of cardio, uh, mainly steady state cardio, HIT or high intensity interval training, and SIT, which is the one I'm gonna go with and it's probably not what you're thinking. The main difference between these three forms of exercise are duration and intensity. Steady state cardio is your traditional cardio. It's as simple and straightforward as it gets. Exercise at a consistent and moderate level of intensity for a set period of time. Think walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, etc. as long as it's done at a consistent level of effort. So this kind of workout will typically go for a longer period of time, usually between 30 to 60 minutes, and not have any rest intervals. Overall intensity will be lower because of the lack of rest, and for a lot of people, this workout is long, potentially monotonous, and boring. The biggest barrier people usually have with getting in shape is time. Time is money, there's not enough hours in the day, you get the picture. And with that, enter HIT, which has seen a huge surge in popularity in recent years, and for good reason. Studies have shown HIT workouts provide similar or greater benefits when compared to steady state cardio, but in a fraction of the time. Some of these benefits would include fat loss or reduction in body fat percentage, an increase in aerobic capacity, also called VO2 max, which has been described as the strongest predictor of future health, mortality, and cardiovascular risks, improved insulin sensitivity, which reduces blood sugar levels as well as the risk of diabetes, and increased mitochondrial density. So mitochondria produce the energy in the form of something called ATP that your muscles use to contract. So a HIIT workout consists of a short period of high intensity exercise followed by a period of rest or a low intensity interval repeated for multiple sets. Example intervals can be 30 seconds of squat jumps followed by 30 seconds of rest, a two minute run followed by a one minute jog or walk, one minute of burpees followed by one minute in the fetal position. The choice is yours. So the key here is to maintain a high intensity during the work intervals. What high intensity means will depend on your own personal fitness level, but it's typically working at around 80 to 95% of your maximum heart rate. So because of the higher intensity, the work intervals need to be shorter because the body just can't maintain that level of output for too long. Typically, the range varies from 20 seconds all the way up to four minute intervals. Okay, great, you might think. Sounds super efficient. But how many times a week should we actually be doing this? Most of the research papers that studied HIT usually had participants do the workouts three times a week. And this makes sense as exercise, especially of the higher intensity, actually breaks down and tears your muscles. A lot of the benefit and gains actually come from allowing adequate time for your body to heal itself and adapt to the demands placed on it. In addition, not allowing the body to adequately rest can put you at a greater risk for injury. Even if you're okay with that risk, there are actually more reasons to avoid overdoing it. A recent article studying the effects of excessive HIT found that higher exercise load actually stagnated performance gains and reduced mitochondrial function. So again, mitochondria are the powerhouses of your muscles. And that coincided with a disturbance in glucose tolerance and insulin secretion. So not only did they halt gains and risk injury, but some of the positive effects of the HIIT workouts were actually reversed. So if you're like me, you're thinking, awesome, an incentive to not work out too much? Unless of course you're trying to get a free watch. Thanks mom boy. But wait, there's more. So sit or sprint interval training is actually another form of interval training. However, rather than high intensity, it requires maximumist intensity. So the term all out is commonly used to describe the work interval for sit. All out literally means leaving absolutely nothing on the table, giving 100% of your effort. So think of the way you would sprint while you're running away from a machete wielding maniac, only to find out that that maniac is actually part of a radiating horde of zombies. Sorry if that jump scared you, but that adrenaline fight or flight response is exactly the type of intensity we're talking about. So yeah, this level of intensity might not be for everyone, but oh man are there benefits. 
So because of this extreme intensity, the duration of the intervals are necessarily short, mainly because, again, our bodies can't actually keep up that level of intensity for too long. The classic sit protocol was a 30 second sprint, followed by a longer, complete rest period of between two to five minutes, done four to six times. So studies shown that the improvements in VO2 max from doing this were similar to HIT. So this study here that I'm showing even showed that SIT provided for a greater reduction in the sum of skin folds, which is an indicator of body fat. So this is absolutely crazy considering the total workout time of the SIT protocol was 10 minutes shorter than the HIT group at 33 versus 23 minutes. But here's the kicker. The SIT group's actual amount of effective training or sprints was only two minutes compared to 16 minutes for the hit group. What the f right? So that's a difference of 14 minutes. Two minutes of balls to the wall work against 16 minutes of almost balls to the wall work? The choice is easy in my eyes. But it still gets even better. So I mentioned earlier that the classic sit protocol was four to six repeated 30 second sprints. Turns out that the prior studies didn't really have a specific justification for using that protocol. In fact, it's been suggested that this protocol might even be unnecessarily strenuous and that similar results might be achieved with just one to two sprints of a shorter duration of 15 to 20 seconds. So further studies actually confirm this, showing similar improvements in VO2 max with groups doing 10 or 15 second sprints compared to the group doing the traditional 30 second protocol. With that knowledge, a modified SIT protocol called REHIT, which stands for Reduced Exertion HIT, was created. So the REHIT protocol is a 10 minute session, three times a week, involving only two 20 second sprints. After six weeks, Rehit was shown to improve VO2 max by 10 to 13%. This just keeps getting nutty. So that sounds good, right? But wait, there's more. They found that after performing the two maximal sprint intervals, each additional sprint actually reduced the overall improvement in fitness by around 5%. Doing another sprint actually reduces your benefit. What the actual f So this data came from a meta-analysis, which is a statistical analysis combining the results of multiple scientific studies. In this case, 38 SIT trials from 34 studies. So this isn't just a one-off thing. So yeah, what the actual f But sign me up. So if you learned something in this video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. Every like and subscribe burns at least 10 calories. Every little bit counts. So as I dive deeper down into this subject, it just kept breaking down my previous beliefs on what I thought was the right thing to do. I've linked the studies down below, so feel free to have a look. As far as the other methods of cardio, I mean, steady state still has its place. Many people love it as a stress reliever. Not me. And it does still burn calories. Traditional HIT is also beneficial in other ways, like it's still technically a way to get peak performance. It's definitely a useful tool for athletes that require any edge they can get. And if you're doing group HIT classes or, or CrossFit or boot camp or anything like that, the camaraderie and, and shared struggle could be just that push you need to actually stick with it. So, I mean, after all, best exercise is the one that you actually do. So what do you guys think? Would you give SIT or the Rehit protocol a try? Are you gonna stick to your routine? Are you gonna stick to steady state or your regular HIT workouts or your Chloe Tsang two week shred? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm no substitute for a doctor. I'm just a regular guy. So please speak with your doctor before doing any kind of strenuous workout like this. So if you see more research and you find anything that's contrary to anything that I've said in this video, feel free to let me know down in the comments. I'm all about learning and getting more efficient uh, but ultimately it's about getting healthier, right? So any way I can do that better, I'd like to know. If you do decide to try this out and someone looks at you funny for sprinting down the street, share this video with them. Peace.